Welcome. We are now in the SEMA Institutional Educational Retina. I am Dr. Daniel Madero, your host. Today you are going to watch a surgery without editing. Um, it's a uh, type 1 proliferative diabetic retinopathy with the extension proliferation of fibrovascular tissue on the posterior pole and equator with uh, treated with pen, pen retinal photocoagulation and presenting with uh, tractional retinal detachment and vitreous hemorrhage. First we'll start by removing the posterior hyaloid and its sub centers connected to the fibrovascular tissue, trying not to harm the retina, causing ruptures, avoiding ruptures. The intention here to is to show the difficulty of a surgeon doing a complex tractional retinal detachment. As you can observe, we are going to start trying to make a space and separating the posterior hyoid from the retina, being careful with the epicenters that will be connected to the fibrovascular tissue and retina. There is one peculiar thing about this case that is the pen retinal photocoagulation <coughs> that we don't use the DRS uh, protocol due to the fact that the first ring from the DRS protocol causes bit retinal adhesion at the posterior pole and also extensive reduction, reduction of the visual field. So our protocol is called external ring photocoagulation it starts at the aura and stops at the vertex veins. We do coalescent laser, we don't do scattered laser. We treat, we do retinal ablation and we treat non perfusion. Uh, uh, to the contrary of the DRS study that does treat hemorrhages, exudates and uh, starting from the posterior pole to the equator. In our mind it's prohibit. We never perform laser, aggressive laser uh, at the equator or inside the macular region. Avoiding destruction of extensive colonies of photoreceptors that will be very important in the near future for the patient's vis uh, for the patient's uh, visual field. As you can see, we are removing the the posterior hyaloid and its fibrovascular tissues. only using the vitreous probe without any scissors or forceps working with the constellation 23 gauge
as you can observe no edition till now removing the fibrovascular tissue that is very um, extensive extending to the periphery from the equator to the periphery gotta be very careful not to cause retinal ruptures but as you can observe the laser underneath it it's coalescent and some way protect the retina from the surgical maneuvers. Now we are using the scissors mode again, constellation, scissors mode. shaving the vitreous base with the fibrovascular tissue changing lens so we can work better at the periphery now with a wider view shaving the vitreous base in a phacic patient
As you can see, our laser burns are coalescent. They are not big. They are big enough to make a nice lesion without causing pain. And it does extend to the vortex veins. So we do treat non-perfusion. So we don't treat all the non-perfusion respecting the equator and the posterior pole. We rather treat the equator and the posterior pole with the removal of the posterior highlight and when needed and medications to control the macular edema either with uh, corticosteroids or VGF inhibitors. And when extremely needed, we do, we do perform some soft and very light focal laser treatment for macular edema on leaking microaneurysms, but very light and very soft laser. <coughs> now we'll start the fluid gas exchange. We'll have we'll run into a little trouble. That'll be a small bubble of air that will migrate to the anterior chamber and will make our life a little harder. There she comes and there she is. Now we'll pick up a soft tip cannula to finish the fluid gas exchange and then we're gonna implant silicone oil as a tamponade. A uh, small quantity of blood is, is leaking and oozing from the epicenters that were removed. We call it tolera tolerable vitreous hemorrhage. We can deal with it, we can live with it, it will be absorbed in a few days.
and now finally the sim silicon oil thanks a lot for watching hope it will be helpful for you in your future see you in the next edition bye bye